Hi, I'm Andrew Choi, a cardiologist with a radiology appointment at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. I'm also a member of the SCCT Board of Directors. Let's talk about the coronary CTA report, specifically the CADRAD system. CADRAD stands for Coronary Artery Disease Reporting and Data System, and it provides a means of standardized reporting as well as to improve communication to referring physicians after a contrast CT is performed. There are three main goals of CADRAD. First is to present the degree of stenosis for the highest grade stenosis on a per patient basis. Second is to add interpretation of that study, as well as any potential cardiac investigations such as functional imaging like FFR, CT, or invasive angiography. Third is to review management of these patients. In patients with stable chest pain, CADRAD0 means no significant coronary stenosis. In this case, consider non-CAD causes of chest pain and preventative therapy with risk factor modification. A case example is shown here. For CADRADs 1 and 2, those patients have a 1 to 24 percent or 25 to 49 percent stenosis. Consider non-CAD causatives and preventative therapy with risk factor modification. These are examples of patients with mild stenosis and coronary plaque. For patients with 50 to 69 percent stenosis, this is graded as CADRADS 3. Consider a functional assessment with a stress test or functional evaluation of CAD, including CT perfusion or FFRCT, as shown here on the right. You may consider symptom-guided anti-ischemic and preventative therapies, risk factor modification, as well as guideline-directed care. For CADRADS 4, these patients have severe coronary disease. 70 to 99 percent stenosis is graded CADRADS 4A. Patients with greater than 50 percent left main or greater than 70 percent epicardial stenosis in three vessels are labeled CADRADS 4B. Consider invasive angiography and or functional assessment with stress testing, FFRCT or CT perfusion, as well as symptom guided and preventative treatment, and if needed, revascularization as per guidelines. Here's an example of left anterior descending severe stenosis. CADRADS 5 indicates those patients with 100% total occlusion. For these patients, consider invasive cath and or viability assessment, symptom-guided anti-ischemic and preventative pharmacotherapy as per guideline-directed care, as well as risk factor modification. This is an example of a totally occluded coronary artery. There are modifiers to CADRAS to include the capital N for those patients with non-diagnostic segments, S for the presence of a coronary stent, G for a bypass graft, and V for high risk or vulnerable plaque. If a coronary plaque has two or more high risk features, this could predict a risk of myocardial infarction. These high risk features include low attenuation plaque by CT Hounsfeld units, positive remodeling, spotty calcification, or the napkin ring sign, uh, which is a rim of calcium with a necrotic core. The report may denote the presence of a vulnerable plaque. This example shows positive remodeling with low attenuation plaque shown in red. Newly, the 2022 CADRADS 2.0 augments CADRADS by incorporating the overall amount of plaque with a capital P. Recognizing plaque burden uniquely identified by cardiac CT allows for an enhanced opportunities for prevention by identifying those patients associated with a higher risk for cardiac events. The overall plaque may be categorized as ranging from P1 to P4. The methods for plaque burden reporting include coronary uh, artery calcium scoring, a segment involvement in score that assigns a score of one for each of the 16 coronary segments with any plaque present, or visual estimate. Quantitative assessment is anticipated to be incorporated into future CADRADS iterations. In addition, the 2022 CADRADS 2.0 adds a modifier for CTA-derived ischemia with the capital I, as identified by either CTFFR or stress CT perfusion. I plus indicates a reversible defect, I minus indicates prior infarction or no ischemia, and I plus minus indicates borderline or inconclusive. Lastly, the modifier E indicates exceptions from non-atherosclerotic causes of coronary disease, such as coronary dissection, aneurysm, or anomaly. Moving from stable chest pain to acute chest pain. These are patients referred for CT with a negative troponin, a negative or non-diagnostic ECG, and low to intermediate risk. 
The stenosis categories stay the same, but with different interpretations. Patients presenting with acute chest pain are interpreted as highly unlikely or unlikely for acute coronary syndrome at category zero to two. Managing considerations account for acute chest pain include incorporating biomarker and troponin, as well as considering admission or if there is high risk plaque present. For CADRADS category three to five, consider the interpretation of possibly likely or very likely acute coronary syndrome. For each of these CADRADS categories, consider admission with cardiology consultation, functional testing, as well as appropriate medical therapies. Of course, for severe stenosis in an ACS situation, consider a cath and or revascularization as deemed appropriate by the clinical team. For CADRADS N, for patients where ACS cannot be excluded, the guidelines recommend additional or alternative evaluations. To summarize CADRADS, now at 2.0, they help standardize the communication of the severity of coronary artery disease by categories of narrowing, uh, as well as plaque extent ischemia, they enable risk prognostication and provide treatment recommendations as a starting point to evaluate with your patient through shared decision making. We recommend discussing this classification with your local cardiac CT physician expert. Thanks so much for your time. Hi, I'm Eric Williamson, past president of the Society for Cardiovascular CT. Thanks very much for taking the time to view this video from SCCT's Referring Physician Series regarding the appropriate application of cardiac CT. I hope you found it helpful for your specific practice as well as for your patients. Please join us for other lectures from this six-part series. I'm confident they will be equally as enlightening. See you then.